If you're driving by yourself and you're listening to Freebird by Leonard Skinner, you're going 20 miles an hour faster by the end of the song. It cannot be helped. Okay, well, I'm not sure how accurate that is, but it does happen to be one of the best things my dad has ever written to me in one of his letters. That, along with updates on home and Walton, Indiana, inspirational poems that he often reads to his football players, and the occasional life advice are all things I've received from my dad the past four years. You see, while a lot of college kids keep up with their parents via text message or the occasional phone call here and there, my dad has sent me a handwritten letter every single week since I started college at DePaul. Yep, that's right, every single week, even during the semester that I was studying in Spain. So as you might imagine, I've accumulated quite a few of these letters now that my time in the castle is nearing its end. And as I've changed, and as my family has changed, and well, basically everything the past four years has seemed to have changed, these letters have remained a constant reminder that I have been given the best dad, the best family in the world, and I couldn't be more grateful. So it only makes sense to use this project to say thank you to the best guy I know. Dad, this one's for you. My dad and I have always been pals. When I was six years old, I started following him around on the football field while he coached. And for 12 years, I never missed a practice or a game. Football was our thing. And then when I got a little older, I became his mowing assistant. And every week we would drive his rusty blue truck over to the church lawn to push mow. But unlike a lot of other girls my age, I loved it. I loved it so much that my dad bought me my own red push mower for my 13th birthday. He even painted the Meg on the front. Okay, not the most glamorous gift for a newfound teenage girl, but he and I both thought it was pretty awesome. Around the same time, my faith really started to take off. And I'll never forget the night that my dad and I were riding our bikes around town. And I said, Dad, I think I want to get baptized. It was so important for me to share this milestone with the most Christ-like guy I know and a person who continues to be a role model for people in our church and in our community. Fast forward a few years and I was starting junior high in the same building where my dad taught weights and PE. And I really couldn't have asked for a better setup being in the same building as my dad for six years. But that's not to say that there weren't a few hiccups along the way. I still turn red in the face when I remember the day that my dad and I collided in the hallway when I was holding hands with my secretive seventh grade boyfriend. Yeah, that was a bad day. <laughs> but as I got older, there was nothing I loved more than sneaking down to the gym during my study hall to hang out with my old man for a bit. You know, that's why it was so hard graduating high school and leaving home knowing that I wouldn't be able to just hop down to my dad's office when I was having a bad day or celebrate with him after a big football win, or walk to church together on Sunday mornings. And so even though I was only venturing a couple hours away for college, I was nervous about leaving my dad behind. And that's why these letters, these 100 and some letters, mean the world to me. <laughs> Each week I, I walk to my mailbox with a skip in my step, looking forward to getting that little piece of home. Margaret Shepard, author of The Art of the Handwritten Note, says there's something permanently charming about receiving an envelope in the mail. It's as if somebody has gift wrapped their words for you. And I love this idea because having something even as small as a letter to look forward to each week can elevate your entire attitude and, and put you in such a, a happy mindset. You know, my weekly letters have even become sort of an event for my friends too. We'll sit around the kitchen table at Alpha Phi while I read aloud the motivational football poems and the funny anecdotes. And sometimes my dad will throw in a couple of bucks and a school photo with some cheesy saying on it. And my friends and I will just laugh as they reassure me that, yeah, my dad's kind of a weirdo, definitely a dork, but 
No one can match his sincerity. And in an age of never-ending email chains and incessant group text and constant social media posts, snail mail has become an absolute treasure, especially when it comes at the same time every week, reminding the recipient just how special they are. And that's exactly what these letters have done for me the past four years. They've reminded me that even on my worst days, on days when I am stressed to the max and I'm feeling discouraged, somebody at home is thinking about me and it instantly lifts my spirits. So, after four years and over a hundred letters, I think I owe at least this to my dad. Dad, it seems like it wasn't too long ago that I was following you around on the sidelines, and in two weeks, I'll be graduating from college and officially passing all 17 grades. I know you've been worried about that. We joke a lot about how you're kind of like the giving tree, but that's actually not too far off. Throughout my life, and especially in the last four years, you and mom have been incredibly generous. I'm so lucky to have had all the experiences I've had, and I've got the two of you to thank for that. But more than the trips to foreign countries and the four years at a private school, you've given me something so much more valuable. You've given me life lessons. From the way you tirelessly work from the moment you wake up until your bedtime at 8 p.m. every night, you've taught me that work wins. From the way you stay positive in every situation, whether it's coaching a tricky team or going with the flow when the whole family gets together, you've taught me that it only takes one person to elevate an entire group. Being reliable, doing what's right all the time, and approaching everything you do with a good attitude are traits that will make others want to be around you. They're traits that will make you a leader. Lastly, and the biggest thing I've learned from you, is to always be eager to help and to always stay humble. You have every reason in the world to brag. Heck, you're a Hall of Fame coach, but you'd never be able to guess it because you're not one to boast. For you, if the church lawn needs mowed, you'll mow it. If a Sunday school class needs a teacher, you're there. You have the mindset that you're never too busy or too important to help others. And for reasons like this and many, many others, I think you've set the bar incredibly high for what it means to be a good dad, a good friend, a good man, and a good Christian. I admire you more than you know, Dad. And in everything I do, I try to remember the lessons you've taught me, and I try to make you proud. I hope you know that. And even though I'm getting older and it may seem like I rely on you and Mom less and less, that couldn't be further from the truth. I think I'll need your guidance now more than ever as I tackle this new phase in my life. And when life gets tricky, as it's bound to do, I know that I can go to you, and you'll have just the right thing to say. I'll end with this. Having you as my dad has been the greatest gift in the entire world. You know, sometimes I can close my eyes and picture myself in the football stadium at Cass, and it brings back all of my favorite childhood memories. I can see plays and bone hits scribbled on the chalkboard in your handwriting. I see your signature Adidas cleats in your locker. All the players are crammed into that crummy locker room, and I can hear you reciting your pregame prayer. Without a doubt, you gave the boys and I the best childhoods imaginable by sharing your passion with us and always giving our family something to look forward to. I can't wait to see Clay and Rory follow in your footsteps and become great coaches like you someday. So thank you again for all of the letters and for making me so proud to be a Mannering. As Jim Harbaugh would say, who's got it better than us? Nobody. You're a good guy, Dad, and I love you so much. Meg.